from Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. The never kind radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Appreciate you being with us. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we put up a MySpace page as an experiment just to see what would happen. And uh, let me give you an update on what has been happening. <laughs> Tell you what's been happening here. Look at this. Um, first of all, I, I just can't believe how many people have, have viewed this page. It's it's up over 6,700 views in two days, <laughs> which is bizarre. Uh, we have uh, over a 1,000 uh, quote-unquote friends, all my close friends personal friends. <laughs> That's right. And uh, uh, we've added a few things. We added some videos in there just to see what will happen. So if you've seen it before, you can go look at it again. You just go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas or go to blowmeuptom.com and you will see the link right there. And uh, we are getting tons of comments, tons of responses. Uh, it's loony. People from other countries. Get somebody from Sweden in there. It's pretty outrageous stuff. Uh, but uh, there it is. It's myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Done. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, many of you are still finding it for the first time. That's fine. And uh, if I think it's uh, overly stupid, I'll shut the damn thing down. So far, it hasn't been overly stupid. You know, we had a years ago, back when this stuff was still fresh, uh, we had a chat room. And it was fun in the beginning, and then it became a total disaster as all the haters and the flamers came in. So MySpace has a few safeguards. Let's see just how many. <laughs> Let's see if the safeguards work. But uh, there it is, and... Uh, Dean, of course, is obsessed. Dean is uh, adding your comments every three seconds. He's adding friends all the time. So I'm just waiting to see the first listener who hooks up with another listener using MySpace. Uh, by the way, anybody out there who manages to snare somebody's wife or girlfriend through our MySpace page, I'd like to get the first report on that as well. Because as I've told you, if your girlfriend or your wife is MySpace page, she's up to no good. She is up to no good. There is no doubt about this. I had another conversation with someone today. Same thing. Same thing. This was a guy. He had a MySpace page. He had a MySpace page before they met. She sees it and says, why do you have a MySpace page? She said, I don't date people with a MySpace page. He said, oh, I don't. I don't add anybody anymore. I don't look at it anymore. Then later she sees he's added a couple of chicks as friends. I mean, come on. When somebody has a MySpace page, they're there for one reason, to hook up. See, at least if you've seen my MySpace page, I've been honest. I told you that my goal in life is to sleep with as many hot listeners as I possibly can. I don't pretend it's anything else. Because really, I don't sell any advertising on there. don't make any money from the damn thing. I know Rupert Murdoch's making a fortune on it, but I'm not making anything. So honestly, uh, the whole purpose of it is to see, uh, you know, just uh, just how many times I can get laid. And um, 
so far, the uh, prospects look pretty good. I'll tell you right now. It is amazing. But yes, if your girlfriend or your wife has a MySpace page or a Facebook page, what are you waiting for? And do you have to see all the evidence of what is going to happen or what has already happened? It's time to go. It's time to go. Yes, MySpace, a place for friends. <laughs> it's a place for friends taking their clothes off. It's a place to, to make friends who are going to come over and do you from behind. That's what it is. It's a place for friends. You're kidding me, right? And then you got that Facebook, which is even more preposterous with people giving out uh, virtual martinis and virtual punches in the face. And <laughs> but okay, we're playing the game now. We're in the game. And we're going to see how many of you are just looking to make friends and how many of you hook up. And I'm willing to bet many of you will simply hook up with other listeners. I can pretty much guarantee that's what's going to happen. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see what reports come in from the front. But uh, me, I'm just watching this with a sense of bemusement here. Dean is like, you know, he's amped like he's been drinking those energy drinks from Aaron. He's like freaking. Running up and down the hallway, he is excited. Dean says there's a lot of love for me coming in there. Well, that's just the first couple of days. The haters usually take about a week or two on these things uh, to surface. And then when they do, they never stop. I mean, they are just a nonstop barrage of hate. The flamers, the angry ones. Oh, you had an angry bitch in there from uh, Washington. Is that Washington State? Oh. Yeah. Keep in mind, by the way, when you try to post a comment, one of the great things about this is that we can delete any comments we don't like. So if they're overly nasty or illiterate or something, uh, unless they're funny, nasty, like nasty in such an illiterate, uh, ridiculous way that I couldn't resist putting them up. We just don't put them up. And, uh, yes, you're right, Dean. Uh, if you're trying to sell things, if you've got a MySpace page that you want to link to our page where you're selling services, there was a photographer trying to sell his services on there. There was uh, uh, people trying to sell products of various kinds. Uh, no, no, because if I'm not making any money from this, neither are you. Make this real simple. So, uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what else can I tell you today? Because there's so much going on. So many things happening. Spent some time with my therapist today. As you know, I've been in therapy now for seven years. Seven years. Yeah, I've been, <laughs> holy cow, sit. wait a minute. It's seven years. It's almost eight years. Now, I've taken breaks. Everybody who's in therapy takes a break now and then. But, um, you know, I, I at one time went three times a week, then two times a week, then once a week. Then for a while, I was going once a month. For a while, I didn't go at all. Now I go once a week. And I'll probably drop it down for the summer because in the summer, I'll be spending a lot of time at the Northern Compound. But, um, you know, one of the great things, and, you know, you guys hear me all the time on the radio talking about how happy I am and how satisfied I am and how content I am. You know, it's making therapy really difficult because I go in every week. My therapist will be the first one to tell you. I come in and say, I got nothing to complain about. I got no problems. I got no neuroses. I got no fears. No anxiety. Nothing to talk about. So it ends up being kind of an over-the-back fence conversation about, you know, just stuff that happened this week. But there really isn't anything um, negative. The guys here all get worried about it because, uh, you know, they they think if I don't have that angry edge, I can't do the show. I can't function. But it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. It doesn't matter what's going on outside of here. I managed to, uh, I managed to rev it up when I get in here. And uh, you are right, Dean. You have seen me uh, recently laying down the law on the telephone uh, with more than one person. Uh, yes, I have had to lay down the law with... Uh, certain chicks out there. I've had to uh, pretty much let them know what goes, what doesn't go, what I'll tolerate, what I won't tolerate. Dean has seen that. Dean saw me with that one chick who, uh, you know, was uh, constantly uh, calling me and trying to hook up with me and then flaking, and uh, I just pretty much kicked her ass. 
In fact, I'm going to tell you a story now that she she's left town, so I can tell you this story. This is true. I had a chick, and Gary met her, so he knows I'm not making this up. I had a chick who was constantly, and Dean and Gary would see me on the phone with her all the time. She would call me, and she'd say, what are you doing? What are you doing later? What are you doing? And I would, like, set it up to, to go see her or for her to come see me. And so I would get out of the studio, and I was done with work, and I would call. I'd go right to voicemail. And this was happening over and over and over. And uh, I don't know what the game was. I don't know what what she had in mind. But after a while, I would just go, all right, sure, I'll see you later. I, I knew she wasn't going to be there. I wouldn't even call her. Then, of course, you know what she would say. She would say the next day, I thought you were going to call me last night. Like this was just a goddamn game she was playing. Now, you may say, why did you tolerate that? Oh, well, oh, I got back at her. She told me one Friday night that she wanted to uh, see me, and I said, well, you can't because I'm on my way to Las Vegas, which I was. Gary and I would go to Las Vegas uh, to uh, do a little thing at the Palms Hotel. We were spending the weekend. We were doing uh, playing a little blackjack at the uh, Playboy Club over there at the Palms Hotel. And we were eating some uh, high-class Italian food and stuff. Even Dean was there. They even let Dean in. These high-class Italian places, they serve Italian food, but they don't always serve Italians. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, he, he had to use the service entrance, but he did get in. And uh, you're exactly right, Dean. I was on the phone with her. I was at the Entourage Suite at uh, the Palms Hotel, and they saw me having it out with her. So I told this chick, we're on our way to Las Vegas, so I can't see a friend. She goes, oh, can I come with you? Can I come with you to Las Vegas? Can I come with you? And I thought about it for a second. I said, absolutely, but I don't have time to get you a ticket. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, get yourself a ticket and meet me in the lobby of the MGM Grand Friday night about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, okay? And I'll be there. I'll be looking for you. <laughs> That's what I told her. <laughs> this happened not long ago. So I thought my plan was foiled. I'm at the airport. I'm at Terminal 1 at LAX, you know, where uh, where U.S. Airways is and Southwest. Gary and I are at the, uh, was that El Cholo's uh, Cantina? Is that what that was? We're at the El Cholo Cantina, Terminal 1, having a margarita, waiting for our plane to leave. And we had like that, you know how you get that, that last plane leaving for Vegas, like 930 Friday night? So there we are waiting for the last plane. And who comes along? Yes, it's her. She arrives there at uh, the airport, and she uh, bought her ticket, and then she meets us at the bar. She sees us at El Cholo Cantina, and she comes over, sits down, tries to insinuate herself into the conversation that was none of her business. And so uh, she said, I didn't know if you were setting me up. I didn't know if you were actually going to Las Vegas. So she, she already smelled a rat. I said, we're waiting for our plane to leave right now. She said, well, my plane is leaving, too. I said, well, we're not on the same plane. What airline are you on? Because guaranteed, whatever airline she was on, I was flying on the other one. If she was on U.S. Airways, I was flying Southwest. If she was on Southwest, I was flying U.S. Airways. So sure enough, she was flying uh, Southwest, and we were flying U.S. Airways. Perfect. So I said, well, you get on the plane. I'm going to see you there later. Now, of course, what she didn't know, she thought we were staying at the MGM Grand. The reality was we were staying at the Palms Hotel. And so uh, she gets to Las Vegas. Now, she is out, I don't know how much, $109, $129, $149, whatever it is now to do a round trip to Vegas. Um, she gets to Vegas. She gets in a cab. She goes to the MGM Grand. And our plane wasn't leaving till an hour after her plane. So before our plane took off, my cell phone already started blowing up. Calls were already coming in. Where are you? Guys, as soon as you get here, come right over. She was telling me, come right over to the MGM Grand. I'm here. I'm going to wander around the casino for a while. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm here. <laughs> Every call. Um, it's 1043. Uh, I'm in the uh, casino at the MGM Grand. Where are you? Are you here yet? What time are you getting in? What time is your flight? You didn't tell me your flight number. Okay, well, I'm waiting for you. I'm here. So uh, Gary and I arrived about 11.30 that night uh, at uh, the hotel in Las Vegas. And uh, the second we touched down, I turned my phone on. It was already ringing. When I turned it on, it was ringing. <laughs> and I did not pick up. And we went to the Palms Hotel. 
and we checked it, and my phone must have rung 150 times. I'm not kidding. It rang over, and uh, I'm here at the MGM Grand, and I don't see you, and I don't know what's that. This is the chick who was always flaking on me. And can I tell you something? I never, ever called her. She did not have a hotel room. She thought I had a hotel room at the MGM Grand, and she was going to, you know, hop into the sack with me. Except I never showed up at the MGM Grand. I'm proud to say it. I have no embarrassment about this. I am proud to say that's what I did. I left her at the MGM Grand, and Gary and I were at the Palms. We uh, checked in, put our bags in our rooms, went out, had a few drinks, went to the casino, and my phone continued ringing, (laughs) and it rang literally until about 2 a.m. And the last message she left for me, of course, she thought she was hurting me, like I was in love with her or something. She's like, well, I had a friend here, and he came and picked me up here at the MGM Grand. I'm going to stay at his place. (laughs) Boo-hoo-hoo. I'm so sad. But she had to pay for the plane ticket. She probably bought herself a few drinks. This trip, uh, she didn't have a whole lot of cashola. So this trip was costly and time-consuming. She was all ready to perform for me, but you know what? I had had it. I was, like, at my wit's end. So, uh, yeah, I set her on a wild goose chase. Can you believe, by the way, after she got back from there, she continued calling me? Still wanted to see me? She, insane. Cheeks are goddamn insane. They're nuts. But uh, that's why we banged them. Yeah, the thing is, you just can't get them to shut up. That's the problem. Stop calling. Stop texting. Stop talking. Stop talking. You can't get them to shut up. They kill me like that. You think you got a good thing going, you know? You're humping and pumping and, you know... Finally, you're done and you're lying there, you know, and the air conditioning is blowing over you and you're just kind of, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes. You're just kind of sitting back here enjoying it. And then they open their trap and they can't shut up. You, can't, you ruin a perfectly good evening. Ladies, can you just shut up, please? Just amazing. So uh, I'm wondering, uh, as I'm sitting here talking about all of this, and uh, I've been obviously had a lot of this stuff on my mind lately, uh, you know, living alone is better than ever. I love it to death because I am just so tired of listening to women. I'm just tired of it. You know, and talking to women who call in on the show, that's about all I can handle. When I get out of here, I don't want to hear a goddamn word. When they start calling with all their crap, they start calling with all their drama, they start calling with, they want to get together, then they disappear and all that. I'm just, I can't take it anymore. I can't. Can't do it. Is anybody feeling me out there? Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Like It. It's like I want to meet somebody, see if she could get into me and just uh, take her home. And then you can get into her. Exactly. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of the program. We appreciate it. And we go to your calls here, Maria, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi there, Tom. How are you today? Great. Good. Well, I just wanted to say that I love listening to your show. I think you and all your time Tom Likas wannabes are absolutely hilarious. You guys are all a bunch of crybabies. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but the truth is for you and all your believers is that gone are the days that a woman puts up with a lazy man. I myself, I'm a beautiful, strong woman, and I've had plenty of men who have loved me. But the fact is I work hard and I make my own money. 
So women like me, we're not going to put up with a man who doesn't do his fair share. Oh, of course you're not. I know that's true because uh, women are lazy uh, and they have been lazy for generations, uh, staying home, spending a man's money. Uh, now, of course, the women are making their own money. Suddenly they're seeing what we men have known for decades. Which is uh, when when the, when one person makes the money and the other person uh, sits on their ass, it's not very satisfying. What but now? You know we are in the workplace and we are making the money. That I think that's fantastic. Competing with. I'm all in favor. Well, the fact is, for your listeners, if you're useless, you're going to get treated badly, and that's who is useless. Is bitch and complain. It's the plain and simple truth. Darling, I am not useless because when I live alone, there's no complaints. My house is immaculate. Uh, there's nobody telling me how wrong I am, how stupid I am, how I don't know how to do things. Uh, I'm glad that you're happy now that you're single and living alone. And you know what I think? And I don't need any yappy you? broad opening her trap all the time and telling me what all my shortcomings are. Well, then you know what would be neat is if you had a show where you had a few of your long-term relationships on to give their point of view about how you were in the relationship that they had. Well, darling, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding because with the exception of one 20 years ago who uh, had an affair and even she did not want to leave, uh, these women don't want to leave. They want to stay. Well, if you're treating them good, of course they're going to want to stay. But if you're treating them bad, well, then that explains why she cheated on you. And uh, again, care. that's 20 that's years ago. And by the way, that does not explain it. Uh, you were not there. Uh, she and I have had the conversation about why she did it and why she felt the need to do it. And the main reason was that she was immature and stupid and she won't be a letter to that effect. So uh, you just don't know and you weren't there. Well, then she's a bigger woman because at least she could admit. Oh, no, no, no. Mom. She admitted it 12. She admitted it 12 years. Le 12 years. I've had enough. See what I mean about women who can't shut their trap? That's what I'm talking about. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Mike. Are you there? <laughs> Hung up. There he goes. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Nathaniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. How are you? Doing great. I'm a very long time listener, first time caller, Tom. Cool. Cool, yeah, no, I uh, totally understand what you're saying about women just wanting to keep down. I just moved to a college town, and uh, this is just I'm inundated with 19- and 20-year-olds that just seem like they're trying to convince me that they have interesting things to say and that they're fascinating people. And I'm like, you don't know your ass from the hole in the ground, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's a lot of that going around. <laughs> it's just making me insane. It's like, I just living alone, same thing, Tom, living alone, going to school, working my way through school, and I just... Have nothing fascinating to say. I already, I just moved into this new place. I already have girls inviting themselves over to my apartment. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Is, are you kidding me? I just don't know what to do. It's you mean, do you mean to live there? No, no, no. To like come over and hang out. Oh yeah, you should have a a party to you know break in the house. I was like, I'll break in the house how I want to break in the house. And invite yourself over to my home. Damn. Yeah. How about you have a party and I'll come over and barf in your living room? Yeah, exactly. I want a bunch of retard college kids coming in and ruining my hardwood floors. You know what I mean? Get Screw that. That's right. Thanks, Tom. It was cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Robert is listening to our show on the online stream from Albuquerque on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Dad, you, you'd be proud of me. I, uh, first of all, how are you? Do you care, Robert? I care very much, Dad. I'm doing great, son. Um, well, ball-busting bitch broke up with her a couple months ago. I gave you the whole story. Um... But uh, I finally, I finally ended everything today. Um, I convinced her I moved to California. We had a phone contract together, and I just got sick of it, sick of paying her phone. Uh, told her I moved to California, and uh, sent the phone back to her. And she started complaining about how I did it. And I told her, "Look, how's this? If you want, 
come out to California, find me, and if you can find me, I will pay for uh, the phones for the rest of the contract, which is another year. thing is, I haven't moved. I'm still here in New Mexico, <laughs> so she's planning a trip out to California as we speak to go and find me. I love that. I love it, too. I'm just dying of laughter. I think that's great. So uh, she, she's going out. To, she's going to go look for me in uh, California, and I'm not even there. <laughs> I had a chick. This was the greatest. Uh, the last chick who lived with me, mm-hmm. um, I uh, let her have like the added phone from my uh, cell phone account. You know, like they let you add one phone. Yeah. It could be ten dollars a month, or it could be free. In my case, it was free. So we were just sharing the minutes. And so after we split up, she was like. Can I take my cell phone with me until I figure out I gotta get my own cell phone and everything? I don't, I don't. Sure, sure, take the phone. That's fine. So after she leaves, I'm saying, so how is it living alone? Of course, it was my idea that she should be living alone and that I should be living alone. She's like, here's what she said. She said, oh, I'm so busy. I have a new job and I have to, I'm working all the time and I got no time for anything. And I just get home at night, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I just eat something. I go right to bed every night, every night. Well, what she didn't realize was by keeping the telephone, I had her telephone bill. <laughs> and so here she was telling me she'd go to bed every night, 8, 8, 30. And there's the uh, telephone. Uh, three hours at night talking to somebody in Hilton Head, South Carolina. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, other guys she was talking to in Texas. I mean, all these phone calls at all hours of the day and night. She was on the phone continuously. It got to the point where I have a 3,500-minute plan, and I, I never use more than seventeen or 1,800 minutes in a month. She went over. Wow. So here's what happens. First of all, I call her up. I say, uh... I thought you go to bed every night at 8.30. What are you doing talking to Hilton Head, South Carolina at 1 a.m.? And she's like, I can't believe you're looking at my phone bill. You're looking at my bill. I'm like, it's not your bill. It's your bill when you pay it. This is my bill for my phone that I let you use. If you don't want me knowing who you're calling at 1 a.m., get a phone and pay for it. Agreed, and uh, that was actually the nice thing. She was able to look at my calls, but I was just getting a bunch of hookups. So, <laughs> I mean, it didn't bother me at all. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that just goes to prove you women can't shut up if they're getting, if, if she's going over 3,500 minutes in a month. Oh, couldn't shut up talking to all these different guys, and then how dare I look at her phone bill? Exactly. What's wrong with you, Tom? <laughs> oh, I'm coming. By the way, she's the same one who later on, after telling me that she was coming home and going to bed, uh, she was also uh, using uh, one of my cars. Oh, wow. And one day I completely forgot the, the, you know, what was going on. I, I opened the mailbox, and you know, in the mail I got, oh, my God, I got another one of these goddamn photo radar tickets. Oh, Jesus. You know, and I... I'm thinking, uh, where was it? It was Fairfax and Crescent Heights. Was it where? I know I went through a light. Where was it? And I opened the thing, and it's her driving my other car (laughs) in a party dress, pearl earrings. The picture was so clear you could see everything. And there she was driving around the South Bay about midnight. She was lost and went right through a red light. And, and, oh, but I'm, I'm so tired. Every night I come home from work. So, so of course, I say, well, I see I uh, must be very busy for you being out at 1145 on Friday night in a party dress. That's three hours after you've gone to bed, isn't it? And she was flipping out again. You know, you, what are you looking at my thing? You're looking at my stuff. What are you just saying? You're driving my car. You're using my cell phone. You're hooking up with guys guy holding that South Carolina. <laughs> Pay for your own goddamn stuff. Yeah, I agree. I'm uh, I'm living the lifestyle, and I'm loving it. I'm uh, going back to school, and I have you to thank. I, I've really gotten my act together in the past year, and it's all because of you, Dad. I, I, I appreciate it. You give the greatest advice. Son, I am so proud of you. Thank you so much for reporting in. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM.
one 800 866 I actually got called out on being a listener of yours the other night. Love it. I was at a bar, and this girl comes up to me, start talking to her. She goes, once you want to buy me a drink? She goes, sweetie, I never buy a girl a drink until I bang her. She goes, you're a Tom Likas listener, aren't you? I go, yes, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. I um, wanted to tell you that it's uh, really neat to listen to you all the time. It makes my morning or my afternoon drive so much better. The freeway it just sucks today. Sorry. Anyway, when you were telling that great story earlier about letting your girlfriend use your car and stuff, I wondered if you ever date any women that don't know who you are. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you, maybe you've covered this before. I'm, I'm a fairly new listener, so I didn't know. And, I have, and, uh, and dated. Then what's that like for you? Do you is it a big tease for them to finally figure out who you are, or there some people maybe you sleep with that never know who you are? Well, I, I, I mean, I have dated women, for example, who don't know who I am, but eventually, after being with me, they find out. Like, for example, I was on Channel Nine the other night here in LA, and you know, I could be dating somebody, and suddenly they go, "Did I just see you on television?" What were you that, doing there? Does that change up the date a lot? Probably, maybe if they, or I mean, ch- change up if not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. Well, sure. Well, I, uh, Dean, Dean, will I tell, thought... Dean will tell you. I I was in uh, San Diego a couple of years ago. I was in San Diego uh, going to do their whatever the Fox morning show is in San Diego on Channel uh, Six in San Diego, and. Uh, they, I, I, they they put me up in a hotel room in San Diego, not far from the TV station. Yeah. So I had a chick who um I said, I'm coming to San Diego. Why don't you come, uh, you know, I got a hotel room. Come meet me at my hotel room. 22 years old, really hot. So she comes to the hotel room. And then uh, we, we knock it out. And then um, in the morning, I get up and I say, all right, I... I got to leave now. She's why I said, because I'm going down to channel six. I'm going to be on TV. So she stayed in my room while I left. And, and now imagine this. She's naked in my hotel room, in my bed, watching me on channel six. <laughs> after the fact. Obviously. Do, yeah. Now, yeah. do you think it got any worse when I got back to the room after she's been watching me on television? <laughs> no, it just seemed like she's such- lying in my bed and suddenly I'm on television. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back. Well, she well, was all over me like white on rice, I want to tell you. Yeah. Because yeah. I've just well, that's, been on that's... TV. <laughs> well, that's, pre- that's pretty good, but does it have to be the kind of young people to pull that off? Well, I, it's it's be... not, uh, it, the point is, I like them young. I know you do. Uh, you know what? Don't tell anyone, but I do too. I'm a guy. <laughs> Guys love that. Yeah, that's true. Hey, uh, you know, we always talk on this program about Viagra and Cialis. Have you ever seen those TV commercials? Yeah. The reason Mike Ditka needs Cialis, have you ever seen Mrs. Mike Ditka? <laughs> no wonder he needs a pill. How about uh, Mrs. Bob Dole? Yeah, yeah. Of course he needs Viagra. <laughs> tell you what, if you had that 22-year-old at the Hampton Inn in San Diego, <laughs> Bob Dole would not need a blue pill. Well, that's that's true. That's probably true. That's how it works. That's how it works. Well, very cool. I won't keep you since you want to stay on that same topic. Um, you can take me out with that wonderful number nine song. By oh, Mr. yes. Lennon. Yes. Thank Governor you. Elliot's former governor, Elliot Spitzer. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. I don't know if I can say this, but my doctor told me, oh, not to be um, kind of discreet here, but um, he said if you ever wake up with a you need Viagra, uh, no matter who's laying next to you. Uh, again, I, you know, you knew that uh, we have limits to what no, we can say on the I air, and you, and you even said you knew that, but you insisted on saying that, and we had to bleep you anyway. All right. All right. What was the okay, point of I'll, that? I'll take my punishment for that, but I... The reason that your your guy put me on the air is I was wondering, just the basic fact is um, you, you claim to have so much money and to make so much money. Um, you know, you say you, you, you flew into Las Vegas from Los Angeles on, on Southwest Air, right? And got to put, a, put up in a hotel. No, actually, I said U.S. Airways. Well, whichever, Southwest, U.S. Uh, no, there is a difference. U.S. Airways is the only airline that has first-class airfare. From Los Angeles to Las Vegas, a 45-minute flight. Uh, you don't have your own plane with all the money you make? Uh, why would I waste money on that? I don't know, but uh, can we move on? You brought it up. I think if you check your tape... You, you don't sound that bright. Yeah, if, I, if you don't mind my saying, you don't sound so bright so far. Really? Okay. Really? This is just what I wanted. What was that? Well, a banner between you and I. Um, you said if you roll your tape, you'll or reread your or listen to your tape. We haven't used tape in years. Okay, your CDs, your DVDs, whatever you use. But can we move on? Again, who started this conversation? Who who has introduced the agenda here? Me? There is no agenda. Well, I guess there is, but. Why? Look, look, I, I know what you're about to do. You're about to ambush me in some way. And no, because no, now that you're now that you are faced with me, you are stalling for time. You are filibustering because you're scared to death of me now that you have to face me. No, not at all. If you have something to say, just just say it. Okay. Why do you uh, arrive at the? Uh, I mean, you, you arrive at the Las Vegas airport and you go to. Oh, a, we're uh, still on the airport. I thought you wanted to move forward. And you go to a hotel, and you have a you get hotel room. You have an Italian dinner. Who doesn't do that in Las Vegas? Everybody, ten thousand guys a night do that in Las Vegas, and you sound, make it sound like you're somebody special. I everybody never, ever, that. ever everybody claimed. Has, I never claimed, I, and I know that. as the failure that you are, listening to somebody who has a seven-figure income and uh, uh, several real estate parcels and stocks and bonds and mutual funds and hot chicks. I know somebody like you who is jealous of that is going to call in here and bitterly make a comment like that. I understand you're bitter. You could have been a contender. You are a nobody. And you are annoyed by hearing me talk about all of my success. Isn't that right, Richard? No, I, I actually don't go to the AMPM and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I own several parcels of land, well, and I own several houses. Because you're not so-and-so. You're, and so. you're nobody. Planet. Of you're course you don't. I know of course do you that. don't. When did I say I went to the AMPM and told people I own parcels of land? You did. You just said that you... you and you that. can't because you're nobody who owns nothing. <laughs> right. Right? Is that is that what you want to believe, Tom? I know it's true. You have the voice because you have a radio station. But That's, I, you know. I, well, there you go. What do you have? And who wants to believe what you're handing What out? do you have besides an unemployment check, pal? Never collected one. I wouldn't know what that's like. Oh, probably ran out of unemployment. Right. Been so long since I worked. I'll bet. Why why so heavy on the, I went to Las Vegas and, and, and made this poor girl? Just be, uh, uh, Yeah, I think it's because you're in Reno. You're jealous that I went to Vegas. <laughs> Don't put down Reno now, bud. Would you feel better if I went to Laughlin? Vegas is way down. Vegas is way down. I know. I, I want to know, Tom, just without interrupting, if you could. Oh, no, no, no. Don't tell me how to do why the program. Do you, do I, don't want, I don't want you telling me how to do the program. I have been doing this show now my whole life without your help or your input. I don't need you telling me when to talk and when not to talk. You serve at my behest, not I at yours. I will speak on this program anytime I want to. 
and I will not take orders from you. I will not take orders or even requests. You must take orders from somebody. No, I don't. Oh, I'm sure you do. No, I don't. Absolutely you do. Well, again, uh, you're speaking out of ignorance. Well, I, well, Which is not surprising because as unemployable and unemployed as you appear to be, of course it's because you're ignorant. By the way, Gramps, thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.